Hey guys, Joshua Peterson, Peterson Electric. Try to do one good video for you guys a week. It's been about three, four weeks for me to do any video. I haven't had a lot to talk about. Uh, I want to talk about real quick on smart switches. Um, if your home is earlier than the 60s or the 50s, you may have an issue because you may not have any grounding in the home, your EGC grounding conductor. Um, if you're trying to mess around with it where the home has power, switch leg fed through the lights and switch loop down, you're not going to have a neutral. Uh, a lot of guys call me up and say, hey, can you come just pull me a TH wire, THHN stranded or solid number 12 down the wall? Answer is no. You have to re-pull the NM cable, and therefore if you touch that circuit, you update the rest of the grounding on the circuit, and that goes through all the walls as well as possibly uh, arc faults. So you have to keep that in mind. Um, I personally like Lutron for many reasons. One, I don't need a neutral to rely on, and two, I don't have to have a power all the time on one side versus the other. So when I have a dead end three way, dead end four way, or a um, maybe I have a wall sconce in the older homes that has power and switch leg up there coming down, and I'm browning to two areas like two dead ends. Um, I don't have to worry about that as much. I can even do it with a two wire and manipulate it with a Caseta and a Pico device to the other side. So no issue there for me. Um, but here's, uh, I've messed with Control 4, I don't know if I like them as much, but here's Leventon. Um, this is a, a decent brand, I really like a lot of Leventon products, I don't, I, pa I favor other brands for their GFCIs, no doubt, but as far as this, um, on the control side, that this is an RF switch, you have to keep in mind, um, in the newer homes, uh, from 2012 and on, you're no longer allowed to rob Peter to pay Paul. So let's say over here we have power, and over here we have a switch leg. But let's say we're going to grab that neutral because it's over here, and we'll put in our master there versus our slave. You can't do that if you do the arc faults. It'll pick up on those switches. So this is why if we have a situation where we've got a three-way or four-way or a five-way switch system, and we have to have a neutral in each box, and you dead end it to, let's say, like a, a banister. I, I just did one last fall, if you met, followed me. You would have to have a 14.4 in there or two 14.2s. You have to have a, an available neutral. And then if you have to have a constant hot and a red traveler and then the black traveler. That mistake is made. So from basically starting in the last couple of years, we've been pulling that different. You should. If the electrician is not, he's not doing his job right and he's probably going to be stuck with Lutron. But if you favor other switch companies, they have to have neutrals to light up. So, for instance, this one right in here has a neutral, a black, and a red. That's the slave, if you will. The master over here has to have the black, the white, the red, and the black. Following the instructions, um, your red is going to end up being the true traveler on the red, yellow, and the red uh, is really the black going up to uh, the light fixture and then the black over here is your constant power that you've decided to put the other side as a constant power on the traveler and the neutral so we tried put, swapping that opposite on the other side it did not work it's almost like i needed my red white wire and my 1422 nm cable but the bottom line is we put the master over here they preferred it over there but it's not going to work it worked out fine on this side it is an rf switch module to control and tell it what to do Anytime you do lighting systems in homes with all the appliances and your computers and people that work from home, if you don't have a whole house search protected device, Article 285 and SPD, uh, you better entertain getting one. And a lot of guys take those SPDs and stick it on the dryer breaker or the range and say, ah, it's good. That's not how you're supposed to wire those. Typically, if you have two spaces to manipulate on both phases, this is the best way. On a full breaker, maybe not a twin. You could do a quad, um, but again, you gotta have that tie handle. Otherwise, sometimes you have to stick it on the top of the subpanel feeder. Uh, there is a lot of code saying that you should. A lot of people talking about the, the board, uh, DORA or NEC, uh, some of the NECA meetings I go to, they say that you should have an SPD on every panel. I agree, if you can, not just one at the beginning of the main panel. Because if a house has four panels and you're traveling through, you need to protect each location without the extra distance. Um, so keep in mind, 
Uh, the fault current rating on that needs to be high and match the line side of the series of that as well on the outside of the disconnect. Uh, the other thing keeping in mind with this system here is it will look a little confusing that you're going to have to, again, um, if I have that load over here, it's not going to work. So this basically, the master slave, or excuse me, the master switch has to be near a normal um, wiring of a three-way. So normal wiring is power one side, switch leg, and load the, the other side. So in this diagram, that's how we figured it out. We tried to run this with that three wires that we only had, and then there's four. One thing to keep in mind is that when you're pigtailing everything, you got to get that right, because if you don't, we already walked in and the light wasn't turning on, so it was a neutral issue, it was loose. Then we had the three-way over here dead, too, because it was an old three-way. So once you get those out of the equation, the two issues, we knew it was working properly. The third step is to make sure the light bulbs are rated, or you're going to blow up your switches within a week or a month. Now you're back to square one. Um, so once you get to make sure it's working right, the bulbs are correct, the light fixture's on, all the light fixtures are working, then you can get into putting in your switches. So... Anyways, guys, sorry this is a little long, but hopefully that'll help you out. Again, this is that Levington system in here. Um, again, YouTube is not an academy for people that do not know what they're doing. Uh, this homeowner did a great job. He definitely knew his circuitry. Uh, I only see that about 5 to 10% of the time. Um, but he got it all right. Again, we just had a funky thing going on. Again, sharing one side versus the other, neutral versus hot on two different power circuits, your arc faults will never set. So you older homes that are trying to get into arc faults, you end up taking all these switches out and seeing, could we still make it work? Because again, you can't travel another path, circuit two, and then you're barring the neutral on circuit four because it's a three game box and maybe one goes that way, one's hallway, one goes upstairs. And also one other thing, if you're in a box that you have a multi-circuit from the 90s or the 80s or the early 2000s, and you have a red, red, black, and white, do not assume that is a three-way switch or a switched outlet. That could be 240 volts sitting in that box. Um, so use your multimeter. If you don't know what any of this is, don't even bother emailing me, please. Just hire a professional in your area. Thanks, guys.